John Jones finishes his fight. Did you see? What did he say? He said, Alhamdulillah. Oh, man. Alhamdulillah. God is so good. Now we're sending this message to our dear friend, John Jones. Bones. What did he say? He said, Alhamdulillah. He said, Alhamdulillah. I actually asked uh, the manager at the gym if he really said it. And he so said what, to me, What else yes, would you say if you had a one on one conversation with John Jones and we're doing this out of the love for Who's him? he praying to? To the God. To his creator. He was screaming, Allahi, Allahi in his language. Allahi. Allahi. John Jones, listen to this. This is profound. Listen, listen. Say it. Uh, back yeah, in the days, the black people was the rulers. They was the kings and the queens. They have a big, beautiful history. <laughs> this is the thing. This is the thing. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. Assalamu alaikum, greetings and peace. How are you guys doing? Guess who's with me? Look at that. You remember our brother Ali Kedokov? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Last time we did a program, I was out in Florida and we talked about his story being a professional fighter. You guys can check out that show. I'll have it in the description below if you haven't watched it bring you up to speed a little bit so we'll be talking about what people who are involved in mma uh, they like watching these usc we'll talk a little bit about that we'll talk about purpose and we'll talk about some other things but how you been overall brother alhamdulillah good. everything's good yeah. everything's good in this part of the world yeah yeah so last time when we did the show how was things how, what kind of response did you get a lot of people who actually contact me from my country, they was motivated, you know, and happy because we see a lot of good stuff over there for Muslims. Because the things, you know, they need to hear some people, and especially they've translated to the Russian language. Translated? So, yeah, so this was awesome. It, you, you see, you see what I'm saying? Because you, you have a, a good following also from your from your uh, fighting days, right? Yeah. So people are still tuning in, You people from, you, you're very well known and um, uh, what in, in Russia, you know, Russia, Russia. Yeah, Russia. Yeah, Russia. Yeah. So look at that. You said that they were very motivated. Just by now, some some good words that you said. You see how you awaken some of the things because you got so many distractions. You got so much negativity. You got so many STDs, spiritually transmitted diseases, right? Yeah, exactly. And yeah. it's affecting the hearts. Now here you come along, someone a public figure. You have you know a voice, a platform, and you hit it out there and awakens the good. Exactly. It's important because we see what job uh, Muhammad Ali did in back in the days, you know. I was in Philadelphia and this was amazing. I see so many brothers and sisters over there. You know, this from his speech, you know, the words is a power, man. So, subhanAllah, you can bring so much good. I'll speak the truth, you know, because the people feed it in from the media. They see all this garbage over there, you know, and they have no knowledge about the religion or the Muslims. So they start judging. But when they actually interact with you and talk to you, you know what I mean? You open the new world for them. Yeah. Most of them don't even know we believe in uh, Jesus is a prophet. Peace be upon him. You know what I mean? That's deep. And you you shared a story, if you can share for our audience, that uh, one time you, you met a, a uh, Christian uh, pastor and yeah. you had a chance to talk to her. Yeah, I talked to her, you know, and she was a pastor from Brazil. She came to give the big lecture over here. She was a scholar, Christian scholar. And I asked her a simple question. I said, can I ask you a question? So I'm not even a student, I know my religion just a little bit. And I asked her, I said, what the fundam, fundamental in your religion is the Trinity, right? She said, right. I say there's the three gods and one and all these kind of confusing things. I said, can you explain it to me? So she starts explaining and I tell her, okay, can I ask you one question? I say, yes. Do you follow the Ten Commandments? Do you believe in them? She said, yes. I said, what the First Commandment says? The First Commandment says that God is the only one. <laughs> I said, didn't this break the old the Trinity mythology? And she got confused because she cannot explain from before. Then I go to the second commandment when I tell them about the, I, I uh, worship the idols. I say, so how it is if the Bible says in the second commandment, do not worship the idols, do not draw the pictures. Not a word above, meaning the moon, the stars, the sun, the birds, not a one uh, on the bottom, meaning the, the fishes, the animals, the human beings, and anything else. So if the Bible is telling you, do not do this, why are you doing this? So my main question to her was, do you follow the Bible and the teachings of Jesus Christ or you follow the church? Because the same you follow the church teachings, you know, with innovation completely. With like, Jesus never wore the cross. Jesus never eat the pork. He was circumcised. He was wearing the long tope, you know, with the Muslim these days, the Arabs dressing. He was having a long beard, you know, and have even a scripture in Matthew 
I don't remember what scripture. This is in Matthew, I think 20... 26, 39? Yeah, when he pressed trade. Yes. You know what I mean? This is the way we pray. Yeah. And he so, went a little further and he fell on his face and prayed to himself. Who's he praying to? To the God. To his creator. Yeah. And when he was teaching the people how to pray, when he raised he, what we do, we call this uh, dua, the prayer to the God Almighty. And he says what? He was giving the prayer, oh Father in heaven, and he give this prayer and then what he say he didn't say in the name of jesus christ what he say he said i mean this is what we do after prayer when we do surah al-fatiha we say i mean yeah that's it that's deep you know just the lord's prayer if you as as somebody who's trying to connect with god let's say your background is christianity and you look at what you said the first commandment is that you shall have no other gods except the one god and you won't exactly. worship anything in the heavens exactly. so what can that that can be stars Nature, I mean the stars, the sun, anything. The birds, the sun, the anything, the angels, the anything the people worship these days, you know, anything yeah. they see. And then it continues on. Nothing in the sea. Nothing in the sea, this means the fishes. Like I saw sometime, uh, I think the Jehovah Witnesses or Baptist people, they put the fish and this represent the Jesus. How will this represent the Jesus if the second commandment says, do not make the idols? And this is explaining the fishes too. This is the word over there. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. And then also, nothing in the earth. Nothing in the earth. No. The That's trees. the first commandment. Of course, you know. So nothing I, I, in the earth. So I don't know why people don't follow it. Like I think they just blindly follow the churches and they don't even open the Bible. Because when I was a Christian, this is what threw me off. When I actually opened the Bible and read it, I saw everything what they do in the church. This opposite of Bible teach. This opposite of what Jesus was teaching. The Jesus come and say God is Alpha and Omega. I don't do nothing except from his will so anything miracle and anything he did is because Allah the God Almighty allow him to and he says you know I'm human how many times in the Bible he's supposed to say I'm human and this is a scripture in the Bible says that God is not a human he never born he never died and he's eternal so don't you feel this contradiction if he says I'm a human and God says in the Bible I'm not a human I can't die and I cannot born so why you guys just blindly follow it and just close your eyes on the scriptures I, I, you made another interesting observation about him making gusso uh, yes. evolution before prayer so yeah what they say he was a baptized no he wasn't every time uh, where we okay if he was uh, do the baptize why after that he go to the grave and start uh, worshiping the God to teach you how to pray why this is exactly what I'm explaining when we uh, go into the masjid every Friday we doing a ghusl. Ghusl, this means take a shower. We completely uh, wash our uh, selves, you know what I mean? Prepare to the prayer, put the clean clothes, and we go worship. This is what we do, you know, on my knees, press straight down, we pray. So this is what exactly he did. He did the ghusl. After that, he go to the grave and he uh, show the people how to worship the God Almighty. This is in the Bible. This is in the Bible. Yeah. This they thought he was a baptized, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, okay, if he was a baptized, where is the, was the cross? Uh -huh. The cross wasn't there and all this. Where is this innovation all come from? Yeah. Did Jesus teach the people to wearing the cross, to uh, worshiping this cross, to tell them if I die, you guys need to follow that and that and that. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know where all this come from. This is not in the Bible for sure. So, so the main point here was trying to get people, because obviously we love Jesus as a mighty oh, messenger. Of and, and we love our brothers and sisters in humanity. That's why we're sharing this message. And it's to direct their worship to the one that Jesus worshiped. Simple. Exactly. So exactly. instead of worshiping Jesus, worship the one Jesus worshiped. And there's a very, very interesting um, passage also in the Bible that talks about, I believe it's in the Gospel of Mark, where someone came to Jesus because God has certain attributes, that he's the all-knowing. He doesn't become born. He doesn't die. And this is a famous uh, verse that we always quote from the Quran. Kul huwa Allahu ahad. Allah hu samad lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakulahu kufuwan ahad. Remember, he's not Arab, I'm not Arab, right? But the language has been preserved today and we have it in the verbatim word of God, the Quran, where God Almighty is saying that he's one, alone worthy of worship. Kul huwa Allahu ahad. Say he's God, the one and only, the absolute, the eternal. He begets not, nor is he begotten. There's nothing comparable to him. So, you remember this passage where they came to Jesus and said, um, asking when the day of judgment is. And he said, why are you asking me? No one no, knows no, no. but God. Not, not angels, not, not humans, not nobody knows except Allah. Only God knows. So if he is a, uh, the son, what you guys say, or he's a God, what most of the Christians believe, how he don't know the day? 
Yeah. Okay, the, the interesting thing, I watched this movie, The Passion of the Christ. When the Jesus was on the cross, what he was screaming? He was screaming Allahi, Allahi in his language. Allahi! Allahi! And he called the God, Allahi. This is in the movie. Yeah, you know, yes, yeah. And he said, did you forget about me? So he don't really know the plans of the God and stuff like that. So. I don't know why people confuse them all themselves, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this one, uh, before you even get to talking about, because this is this is what you're gonna have to be looking into. It's very simple and straightforward. If you are contemplating the purpose of life, you want to know why you're here, where you're going when you die. You're gonna have to follow the blueprint that the Creator sent. Now, which one? Which religion? This person making a claim. This one. That one. When you when you boil it down, you have Islam and you have Christianity. And if you're a true Christian and you really want to follow the way of Jesus, it's going to lead you actually to submission to the will of the Creator, not the creation, Islam. But now before people even get to that, where we're even discussing this, a lot of times people, they don't even think about the purpose of life, why they're here. What do you like to tell them? For me, when I was a Christian, I was still fearing God person. I always want to be in a straight path. And I always have something in my heart, like I'm doing something wrong when I go to the church, I put these candles to these pictures, you know what I mean? This wasn't make sense to me when I can simply just pray straight to the God. So I uh, pray to the God, you know, cry all night with my heart and ask God to guide me, please. I read the Bible and read the Quran and the Quran, when you open the book of the Quran, almost every ayat in the Quran talking to you. The God talking to you and He guides you right over there. When you with a pure heart, you want to be guided, you're gonna be guided. When you don't want to be guided, you know, when you're trying to find some faults, you're not gonna be guided. There's even ayat in the Quran, right? It says, even if they want to find something, they're not gonna find it. But the, I will uh, increase their disease in their hearts. Yeah. You know, so, if you really want to find a straight path, just think about this. Look at the Jesus lifestyle. Look at what he was preaching. Did any, the simple thing, why people eating the pork? Did Jesus himself eat the pork? Where he says, Okay, you guys can eat it. You tell me about the uh, New Testament. How many people write the book, the Bible? Thousands and thousands of people. You know what I mean? The people who write the New Testament, I don't think they even walk or talk to the Jesus Christ or even know somebody who knows Him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And how does the New Testament, if this was written way, way, way back in the days, there's not New Testament. Yeah. In my opinion, this is just... Uh, Catholic priest write it down on their basement. You know what I mean? I mean, it's fact that we have uh, Bible scholars that tell us that we don't have a copy of a copy. Many people think that Matthew wrote Matthew, Luke wrote Luke. Mm -hmm. These were the disciples of Jesus. But the, the fact is, and, and we're never trying to offend anyone in any religion, these are just the facts that we don't know who Bible scholars tell us. People, of course, call the Gospel books Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Well, they call them Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John because we don't know who wrote these books, and there's no point calling them Sam, Fred, Jerry, and Harry. I mean, they're, they're written by people. We don't know who they were written by. They are anonymous. You might not think so because they have the title, The Gospel According to Matthew. Whoever put that title on it was an editor later. The followers of Jesus were Aramaic-speaking peasants from Galilee, lower-class men who were not educated. In fact, Peter and John in Acts chapter 4 verse 13 are literally said to be illiterate. They couldn't read and write. Of course not. They were fishermen. They didn't go to school. The vast majority of people in the ancient world never learned to read, let alone write. And their native language was Aramaic. These books are written in Greek by highly educated, rhetorically trained writers who are skilled in Greek composition. We don't have a copy of 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 any original Bible. So now imagine, I give this example, imagine that you're driving and we'll give two examples from this. You're driving and the police pull you over and now they go ahead and ask for your license. So you give them a copy of a copy of a copy of something that's not even a copy from your license. Mm -hmm. Looks like it, remnants of it. Would they accept this? No. But then it goes a little bit further. What if now you had things marked off and things were changed on that copy of a copy of a copy of what's not even a copy of your license. So this is what we have of today, the modern day Bible. That's not, that's not your fault. I mean, but now people can go ahead and invest further in that or look beyond. Another example I give is imagine if me and you are driving. You want to be the driver or me? Who's driving this time? You drive. Okay, I'm driving. So I ask you, I'm driving. And you're like, Eddie, slow down. And I'm just like, Arr! and the police pull us over and they give you a ticket. 
exactly. It's not fair. <laughs> Does that be fair? But that's the whole thing, and that's what people gravitate to in Islam, that you're responsible for yourself. You're not stained because someone did a sin, you know, Adam did the sin. We have original goodness. What's your thought about that, being a former Christian, now that now it's someone, Jesus, because the whole concept is that Jesus had to come die for your sins. And exactly. I, I, okay, the, just logically think about this. Will you sacrifice your kid? Why will you do this? You all mighty God, you're so powerful, and you just want to sacrifice your kid to uh, forgive your sins. How does it make sense? All this have no, absolutely no logic to me. And I'm telling you, this is a form of Christian. You know, I don't offend nobody. I was a Christian. I born in a very, very religious family. You know, every Christmas we stay nights at the uh, church. You know, we follow all the commandments and everything. But you know, I find out this very unlogical because now, as a father having the kids too, you know what I mean. You understand this more. How? Like, come on, man. But I don't know. This is just confusing. All this. And Islam came, God is not the author of confusion. So Islam came and a line of messengers, you see, every messenger came with the same message. Pay attention, chronological order. It makes sense, easy to digest. It doesn't have you doing a bunch of, bunch of mental gymnastics to make it fit. God Almighty created us and out of His love, He sent guidance. And every messenger came with the same message. Worship the, the one, message. God. one God. Worship the Creator, not His creation. And they came with the blueprint for life, the purpose of life. Now we're sending this message to our dear friend, John Jones, boom! <laughs> Did you see, what was, your, what was your take? And when you saw the, after his fight, we know Habib, yeah. he says, Al Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. First of all, I want to say Alhamdulillah. That means it's like saying hallelujah, right? Like yeah, yeah, all yeah. praise to the Creator. Yeah. And, and then he prostrates like Jesus did, praying to the God Jesus did. But then it was interesting, John Jones finishes his fight. Did you yeah, see? What did he say? He said Alhamdulillah. He said Alhamdulillah. Oh man, Alhamdulillah. God is so good. How are you doing? Oh man, Alhamdulillah. God is so good. Hey. He said, Alhamdulillah. He said, Alhamdulillah. I actually asked uh, the manager at the gym if he really said that. And he said to me, yes, he did say this to support all the brothers in the world. That's what he said to him. So this was nice, you know. That was nice. Thank you, John Jones. Now we're reciprocating more love because I, I did a, uh, we did a, a video not too long ago after he did this and we broke it down. We'll leave that one also so people can actually see what is the meaning behind it. And when you know the meaning, I'll, give a, I'll, I'll, I'll make it even easier for them and I'll go back to the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, in the Gospel of Matthew, when one came to Jesus and he said, Oh, good master, what good thing can I do? He's coming to Jesus. What good thing can I do that I might have eternal life? Meaning, how do I get to paradise? And Jesus, it's like me coming and say, Adi Kedakov, man, you're so tough, you're so strong, isn't it? He said, he said Alhamdulillah. Right? So you're shifting. You see a lot of fighters, they do this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're shifting it. So this is what he was doing. Jesus, he's shifting it. He says, uh, he's saying, Alhamdulillah. Yeah, he said, Alhamdulillah. why are you calling me good? There's none good but God. Yeah, God. What do you got to say about that? That's deep, huh? Exactly. It's very deep, man. In every point and aspect of his life, he was proven that God is only one and worship him. Every message he was sent, he said that God is only one and worship him. He never says, worship me. A lot of people tell me, but he called him a father. I say, okay, when you go into the Catholic Church, what do you call a priest over there? You call him a father. So you call him a father, not because he's your physical father, because he's your spiritual father. The God is a spiritual father for all of us. He created us all. So this is what he was mean. Think about that. And Alhamdulillah, he guide us all. If you go and look every, uh, start from the Adam, and down to the Jesus in the Bible, every prophet was talk about the God is one. Every one of them. And as soon as you get to the New Testament, the people, we don't know who is authors of this, they start this Trinity thing going on over there. Yeah. Is that correct, right? Yeah. But if you look at the every prophet who was in the Bible, they was talk about the God is one. And the people who is, doesn't do nothing with Jesus or nobody, they start this Trinity and this mythology. Yeah, when you look into the history, you look at the uh, the true followers of Jesus, they preached the pure monotheism, uh, calling people to worship the one God. As time went on, you had the the mixture coming into collectively with the pagan rituals of many of the Greek gods, and they already had the Trinity and mixed up, and now to make, kind of, you know, intertwine, make this fit, now you have what's developed today, far away from the pure monotheism. So John Jones Bones, you know, appreciating, you know, uh, and we're giving that love back. So having him think, people, someone like him, you know, 
people, this resonates. If you're sincere and you're really thinking, not turning off your thinking cap, putting it on, this just makes sense. It goes what we call the fitra, the natural inclination inside every human being, right? So what, what else would you say if you had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with John Jones and we're doing this out of the love for him, his fans, and everybody out there, you gotta be sincere. You gotta be genuinely searching for the truth. And a lot of times it's hard because you have an emotional attachment to this. So what, 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 do you, what would you say to John Jones Bones? Coming from Ali Kedokar, former professional fighter. I will teach him about Islam, I will tell him the purpose of this life. We're not here just being like an animal to eat, you know, sleep and repeat. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, to eat, sleep and repeat. Yes. Rinse, wash and again, the cycle yes, goes. Yes, we're not here for that. You always have to think about it. you telling me you believe in God, but don't you believe there's going to be life after it? Don't you believe you have the purpose? To deserve everybody telling me too when I talk to people, oh, if God's so good, why he don't put us all in the paradise? Okay, I say the first place, when you want to become a doctor, how many years does it take you to become a doctor? You know, you go through the tests, you go through the exams, and then you became a doctor. It's not just they give it to you and go. He will be maniac to murdering people over there, you know, with a scalpel. But uh, the same with the paradise, the only clean people can enter. Do you imagine the child molesters, the murderers? You know, the, all these bad people will be with you over there. Do you think they deserve it? You know, this way you have to go through the test, through this life. There's so much fitna, you know, so much stuff in this world. Even our iPhones, our phones, how much stuff over there? You know what I mean? We have to go through every day. You're passing your... Uh, and the word jihad, what a lot of people don't understand. What the Mike Tyson, when he became a Muslim, he said he learned. Jihad is uh, fighting your own desires. You're fighting your own desires every day. If you're a married man, you don't look to the other woman. You don't swear, you don't drink alcohol, you don't do drugs. You know what I mean? This is the jihad. You're finding your own desires. This is the main point of our life. We find our own desires. So when we meet Creator, we can have our head up and we say, we made it. Alhamdulillah, we made it. You know what I mean? In another way, when you don't made it, <laughs> you're going to put your head down and you can't say nothing because God tell you, I send you a messenger and a messenger and a messenger. I give you the book and I give you all the opportunities to follow it what's your problem is exactly. what we're gonna yeah. say what are you gonna say what we're we gonna say when, when, when you especially now you're talking to John Jones the bones and you ask him like what do these people have in common Kunta Kinte what is Malcolm X what is Muhammad Ali let's start with they all have the same roots and when the African Americans go to their roots like Kunta Kinte I mean 30 plus at 30 percent of the African Americans who were brought here unjustly on the Atlantic trade ships, they were actually Muslim. Kunta Kinte yeah. was saying, Allah, Malcolm X went back to his roots. And he's a Muslim, one who submitted to the will of God. America's hero, you see it in the gym, you see Muhammad Ali, people yeah. be wearing his shirt, but they forget. And then many people have this hatred because of all the media hype and all the lies they've been told. They hate Muslims, but they're wearing Muhammad Ali on their yeah, shirt, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. That's wrong. I want to thank Almighty God, Allah, for you all. Thank God for my talent. All the praise and honor that we give them goes to Allah. So they were Muslims. All what they have in common, they were ones who opened their minds, they did the research, and they went back to their roots. So what would you, you know, telling John Jones Bones to go back to your roots, and that would be Islam. Exactly, go back to your roots, like he's changed his name, Cassius Clay, because he said this was my slave master name. You know, my name was Muhammad Ali, and this why he, back in the days, the black people was the rulers, there was the kings and the queens, they have a big, beautiful history. That's deep. You know, you was about in Islam, and Allah raised you up so high, you know what I mean, you have everything. But then they brought you in the boats over here, and they just start your uh, history from that. And what amazed me, the people just don't want to go back. They agree with that. John Jones, listen to this. This is profound. Listen, listen, say it. Yeah, you just agree with starting your uh, history from the bones. You go look at your slave master. I see some documentaries. They look. Why you cares about this part? This part was did on you unjustly. Look at the unjustly, part when yes. your grand, grand, grandparents were the kings and the queens and the rulers. He's saying yeah. that. Look at that. I understand the African Americans back then, when before they brought them, they were kings, queens. They had a civilization, and that was all taken from them. Yeah, and you know what I mean. You have a beautiful history, and what, what, what make you be so uh, special? You guys always Muslims, and now you pull out of the church, and I don't know how to put this the right way. You know, like uh, Mormons, 
an example, right? They thought the black skin is a curse, okay? And people still keep going to this church, you know? I don't want to offend nobody, like I say, but I'm just give you the facts. Then, like, uh, all the angels are white. The Jesus was uh, drawn as this a This is what Muhammad Ali was saying. Yeah, this is what he this was is, thinking. This is the Muhammad. words of Muhammad Ali. This is what he's saying. He, he's sitting with his mom and his mom asks his mom, Mom, did we going to make to the paradise? She say, why? She said, because everything is white and everything black is bad. Black cat is back. Bad, bad, black duck in this story, you know. Muhammad bad. Ali is, 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 is Muhammad Ali he's was, thinking. Yeah. He's a thinking man. This yeah, is the, what he was a, a legend. Kid. He was a little kid, and this is what he had in his mind to talk with his mom. You know what I mean? Because this is what he was seeing in the church. Only see the hate to the black and see all pure and white. You know what I mean? And then he said, "Do you sure we're gonna make to the paradise?" And she say, "Yes, probably we we'll make." And he said, "What we're we gonna do? Serve in the kitchen?" <laughs> Muhammad Ali said, "We're gonna serve Ali, in the kitchen." Yeah. So Subhanallah, you know what I mean? You can't do because we all created from the God. Uh, you know the hadith of the when the God get the different type of earth from the earth, yes, yes. So get type of different type of earth. You know this was a black earth and, and all this type of different colors of the earth, and he created Adam. And this is how we all have a different different colors. shades and colors. Yes. But most important what is over here is the yeah. heart. The God don't look at your skin color. He don't look at your position. He don't look. You're a president. You're MMA fighter. You're a champion. He look what in your heart. This have to be pure and sincere with your God. And don't, don't just worry about now who's on the winning team, you know, because the people who are following Jesus, his true followers, they were Muslims and they were persecuted. And this is what you have going on exactly. day with the Muslims. So now that's the biggest test. That biggest test is now when the truth comes to you, penetrates, you're like, you have those, you know, people say certain things and it just clicks. And you know, if you're sincere, this clicks. The worship of one God, not three in one, not someone dying for your sins. You're responsible for yourself. These examples he's given, it makes sense. And now the message is coming to you. Are you courageous enough? Or you say, oh, the Muslims, they're not on the winning team right now, right? Mm -hmm. It's not cool to be Muslim. You're going to wait for that? What are you going to say to your creator then? The thing is I want to say, I always go to different churches, okay? If everybody united, then why they have a Korean, even Asians, Korean church, some other church, you know. Asian church. Asian church, different. The, Jamaican the white, church. Well, Jamaican church, Haitian church. You know what I mean? Different type of churches. And people focus on, oh, when you talk to them, they say, oh, Jesus was black. Oh, no, Jesus was white. Oh, no, Jesus this was. We Muslims, we focus not on his skin color. We focus on his teachings. Not on his, not on his skin color, but his teachings. Exactly. The, what he got, the pure monotheism. Exactly. He came with the God as one. Worship him. Alone. You know I mean? Alone. Yeah. You know what I mean? He came with this message to us. And this is what we as a Muslims we're following. If he will come to the earth, just th think of thoughts right now and he will see the Muslims and he will see the Christians he don't know who and what but just the look I guarantee he will choose the Muslims and I give you uh, why the Muslims grow the beard like them we don't need the pork like him we were circumcised like him we dress like him the mother Mary all our women's dress like her wearing this scarf the hijab, and the hijab Mary was in so, hijab so visually he just look he will think this is my followers you know what I mean when he look at the woman who is a short scarf half naked a man with a shaved face Wearing the big cross. Up here, so you made a really great point. If Jesus came here today, he'd probably get stopped by the TSA. Because <laughs> he would look like a Muslim. And remember, guys, don't get caught up with the words. Muslim is one who has consciously chosen to submit to the will of the Creator. That's what a Muslim... Look up these definitions. That's what the Jesus says in the Bible. I submit to the God. And he say, you're all willing to submit to the God. But this is what it is, yeah? The that's the that's what it is. It's submission. We submit to the God. Yeah. Just don't play with the words and don't be scared of Arabic. You know what I mean? Like, okay, in the Bible, they translate. Okay, let's go back to his name, Jesus, right? His yeah. name is Yeshua, right? It wasn't, yeah. yeah. Like, what was it again? Tell him. Yeah, Yeshua. Yeshua. You know what I mean? So his real name is Yeshua. So they completely change all the names. I'm pretty sure the disciples and the people who was amongst them in the Bible, they changed the name too. They say Moses. His name wasn't Moses. His name was Musa. You know what I mean? So with, with other... Old, you know, because they change it. Uh, I don't know, like you know, back in days when I was Christian, my people tell me why you accept the Arabic re religion. I say, okay, why you accept the Jewish religion? <laughs> Do you think he was Ossetian or something? You know? He was Russian? No, he wasn't, man. So this is, you know, my point. Don't be scared of the word. Just stick to the translation. Translate the word and see what this means. That's you know what I mean? And I agree. I guarantee you're gonna agree with it. <laughs> That's right, John Jones. And we appreciate that you came out. He, he said, Alhamdulillah. And you said, when you called his coach, 
he said, remind us again, the, gym. the manager of the, the gym. gym. Why he did that? He did it to support all the brothers in the to, world. To you support know? all the other the Muslim fighters in the I'm world. That, yeah. And now we're going ahead and, and send some love his way to John Jones and invite him, giving him an invitation, and send him something to think about. All right. And this is never again. You didn't see us insulting anybody. We're not putting nobody down. We're just stating some some obvious facts. We're inviting people to think and to ponder, giving also the the Islamic position on Jesus that really resonates and makes sense for the thinking person. And before we conclude, what else would you say to, there was, um, I, I mentioned, I forgot, we mentioned the Lord's Prayer. You know, this also has that prayer, it's so, so connected, so similar to the al fatiha the opening chapter of the mm -hmm. Quran, where, O our Father who art in heaven. So yes. you could just chant this, O our Lord, Rab, Ab, yes. Rab, O our Lord who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come that means everything belongs to the creator thy will be done that's islam right there yes, yes. that's what islam is exactly so exactly. if you're reading the the lord's prayer right there that's a direct connection are you praying to jesus in this lord's prayer no you pray directly to the god to all one and only you know what i mean yeah to the creator. Do, do you do you think that do, do you think people like john jones when they you know when people hear if you're sincere and you hear the simple message clear because people get stuck you know trinity and it, you know it doesn't make sense and and they try to make it fit and now here comes the truth the pure monotheism one god leave it alone hero israel the lord thy god is one jesus could have been like expounding on three and me and the father and the holy ghost he didn't do that he just said one so now when he hears this, this fits, this just, it fits if you're sincere. Why do you think people back away? They still, again, we talked about winning team and everything. Uh, what, what, in your experience, you know what, what is I it? I know what I think. I think, brother, like back in the days when the Moses, can you imagine, Moses just brought the people through the ocean. He opened the ocean right in front of them. It's a huge miracle. Can you imagine to see this with your own eyes, witness something like that? You know what I mean? We don't see nothing. We just believe. Yeah. But these people witness something like this. And he, w w when he go to the mountain to reveal um, from the God the Ten Commandments, what they did? They built a bull to worship him. Mm. So in my opinion, what uh, the Christians get confused, they need to see something to worship it, to believe in it. You know? mm. to feel. This is why they have all these pictures and they come and they worship to these pictures. They ask through these pictures to the God. The same with the prayer. When they pray, the, they say the God, uh, the Jesus is the Lord, right? And why you pray to the God? And then you mention through the Jesus Christ. You know, you say, oh, in the name of the Jesus Christ. So the same uh, pictures over here. When you go to these pictures, you pray to the God, but through them. But what did Jesus say? Pray to the one God. Pray to the Lord. Lord. Yeah. To my Lord and your Lord. You know what I mean? That's what he said. Look at that. That's important. To, Jesus said to my God and your, your God. God. Yeah, that's what he said in the Bible. Yeah. He said... This is, uh, we can go on and on, and I, I don't want to um, continue on too much. We covered a lot, a lot to think about, and again, this has been something that's done out of the love. And at the end, if a person chooses to go ahead and continue on that way, I mean, we still, I mean, yeah, yeah. What, what, well, this, this is simple, you know, we want something good for you. This is like receive the gift, you know, we have a. Uh, we have uh, the hadith when the Prophet says, uh, you, you're never going to enter the paradise if you don't want something for your brother what you want for yourself. Uh, I want to get to the paradise. I want for you to get to the paradise. This is why I'm sh sharing the message. You accept think, it or not, but we don't put anybody down. We love people. This is why we're doing this. Wow. Think about that. You, the, they're trying to take, the person tries to take you to the club, to the party, and, and, and get you in ahead of the line, and buy you drinks, and hang out, and, and that actually ends up being like your, your, your worst nightmare of a friend, right? Yes. You follow that person, and you're going in the wrong way, right? But now you're happy, like, that's my buddy. But now you got your, bro your, your brother in humanity, Ali Kedakov, out of his love, he's trying to hold your hand and get you to Jannah, to paradise. So people shouldn't, you know, because a lot of times people take offense and get upset exactly. and whatnot. You don't have to be offense because you, uh, I speak out of the, I was a Christian myself. You know, and I, I know the position of the people when they're misguided or they read a lot of stuff on Google, Internet, and they became, you know, shakes and the scholars out to the Google real quick. You know what I mean? I just want to share the message. If you really want to find the God, open the Quran, start studying and clearly just pray to the God, the all, all one Almighty, and ask Him to the guidance, and I guarantee He's going to guide you. He's going to guide you to the straight path. Well, uh, we promise we talk a little bit where, uh, what, what was your favorite when you when you were fighting? You fought for over, what, like 15 years? Yeah, more, man. More, right? Yeah. 
professional fighter, left it, retired. What, 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 was, your, what was your favorite uh, technique in the ring? Things that, what would you like to do? More on stand up, right hook, take them down? What, 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 what? I like to kick people in the head. <laughs> <laughs> you like to go for the, the uh, crocop kick, kick to the head? Yes, I love crocop back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> it was my favorite, actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what we have. We're ending it here with Ali Kedokov here on the Dean Show. And inshallah, help us get this message to John Jones the Bones. Is that how you say John it? John Jones the Bones, yeah. And if he wants to hook up with you, if he wants to connect, where can he find you? American top team, man. Florida. Yeah. If he's in Florida, does he visit? Uh, I don't think he visits, but maybe. Well, you got your brother. He in... has one of his friends, Romero. We, uh, we... He's from our team. He's trained with him. Okay. The Romero trained so him. now you got two. You got two of your pretend. You got your brothers here. You can visit if you're Chicago. Look us up. And this is the place you want to go. The there Dean you... Show, my man. Yeah, we'll show. hook you up there. And then if you're in Florida, hook up with our brother Ali Kedokov. And for for the rest of you, subscribe and tune in every week here to the Dean Show. Leave your comments and some of the gems you picked up on. Share them with us. We'll see you next time here on the Dean Show. God willing. Peace be with you. Salam alaikum. Peace and love. Assalamu alaikum.